Welcome to Bottom Line Tech Talk. Today I want to talk to you about the Rowcat Vulcan Pro Keyboard. This is Rowcat's brand new keyboard that just came out the end of November. What this keyboard is, is their, it, it's a, a continuation of their Vulcan line of keyboards. I'm sure a lot of you are probably familiar with those. You know, they get the Vulcan 120, the 121, the 122, and recently the Vulcan TKO. Well, as I said, the end of November, they released the Vulcan Pro and the Vulcan Pro TKO versions. And with these versions, the difference between these and the other Vulcan line is the new key switches. Inside the Pro line, they have their new optical key switch. If you're not familiar with optical key switches, they're very similar to mechanical except for, well, I guess they're not really similar. Let me, let me rephrase it. Instead of having the actual mechanical pieces inside of it, um, they have a little light. And when the key is pressed in, and it breaks the plane of that light, and when it bounces back, it sends in, you know, a signal to your computer to, to put a letter up on the screen, or, you know, whatever you're doing, whatever you're typing. That's how it works. The basic way to explain is, is it's faster. It, uh, it's just to be a little quicker than using your typical mechanical switches. So, as I was saying, this, these boards are very similar to the other Vulcan line. And what I mean by that is they have the same construction. There's no difference except for the color. The rest of the board is constructed exactly the same as the earlier models. For example, right here, I have the Vulcan 121. As you can see here, metal finish, the knob, all the keys, the magnetic, you know, um, on the rest, the wrist brace. Here's the new Pro Board, same design. Aluminum cover, same you know key structure. And what I mean by that has their little half cap keys on her. You can see it doesn't have four keys on caps on top of the keys. And then also <clears throat> there's one negative though. It does have these ABS keys. I'm not a fan of the ABS. I kind of wish they'd gone with the double shot. And uh, the reason being is I think that would improve this board even more. Um, it's, you know, just something about these ABS keys that really nobody likes. You don't like getting the greasy film on them and the smudges and, and they start to wear, you know, they wear differently. They don't have that protection like you get in the double shot keys. So you, you, to be quick and honest about it, that's, that's really the only negative I have about this board is those ABS keys. The rest of the, or the keycaps, the rest of this board is phenomenal like all the other Vulcan line of boards. I absolutely love the Rocket Vulcan keyboards. They are just, to me, by far the best. And I've owned Corsair, SteelSeries, Logitech, I've had them all. These have been my favorite keyboards. I've been using the 121 for a while now. And, <clears throat> and this is the one with the tactile keys. Um, I'm personally a fan of tactile keys. Um, I work in an engineering field. Um, and I just like the way a tactile key feels. I like that little bump you get in there. It lets me know that I'm, you know, I'm getting there. I'm pushing that key and I'm, I'm doing that, you know. With that said, this board here, as I said, the Pro has the new optical switches made by Rocat. They're, these are their own proprietary optical switches. And I'm just going to say it. These are phenomenal. I have used the optical switches on, in fact, on the new Corsair keyboard, the K the 100, and I've played with. I haven't owned one of the Steel Series optical switch boards, but these here, to to me, are the best. Now, is it like a huge difference? No, optical switches are all very similar in my opinion. These just have a slightly better feel to them, and, and why I think that is is because to me, this build board, this optical switch feels like a mechanical switch and because of that I like it because I like a tactile now it's not tactile it's still linear but it's even better than their their linear switches that they have on their other boards for instance I have over here this is their new TKL board now this is not the pro this is just the Vulcan TKL and this has a linear switch in it and as I said, this has the optical linear switch. To me, this switch is better than their older linear switches. Not by a great deal. 
kind of similar to the other optical switches. It doesn't beat all the other optical switches by a lot. It doesn't beat other linear switches by a lot, but it's enough where I like it. I like the feel of them. Um, and one of the reasons is, this, as I was stating, I work in an engineering field. I type a lot. And that's also why I have a full keyboard because I need a 10 key because I do a lot of numbers and stuff like that. But I do type a lot. This board here with their linear switches and like on a lot of linear switches, I have one big problem with linear switches for me is I don't type well on them. I just seem, I don't know if it's because of the quick response, the quick actu actuation on them. I make a lot of errors. And because I make those errors, I'm not a fan of them because I, if I'm just gaming all the time, then this board is perfect. But I gotta do it, I mix it up. I gotta do a little bit of both worlds on these. I work on them and I game on them. So I like a normally a tactile switch. But in this case, these optical linear switches, I love them because I can type on them and I don't have the errors like I have on their TKL board with their older linear switches. It just works. It works for me. <clears throat> it's phenomenal. Um, do I love it more than their tactile switches? A little. And when I say that, it's because I do like the smooth feeling of them still. I like the feedback of those tactiles. I didn't like linear switches before, but these I like. They're just, I don't know how to explain it. These feel over here, you know, in a sense, kind of like quicker, even though they're not technically by specs quicker. They have like a slip to them, you know, but these are smoother. And they, they actually kind of feel like I may have to push them a little bit harder, but it's still smoother. And with that 1.4 actuation point on these boards here, it's quick still. And it just has that feel, like it's like a mechanical feel. So I, I have no problems typing on it. And I love that about it. So moving on along, I have gamed on it works wonderfully in gaming it's quick it's you know i don't have like a high res 240 hertz or, or a monitor so probably not going to see the differences in these numbers all these newer keyboards you know supposedly do with their higher pulling rate and all that junk like that but it it responds very well for me am i like going out and having huge success gaming compared to the old no but it just feels a little bit better in my hand when I'm using it, when I'm moving across it and stuff like that. Um, does it say I hate tactile switches now? No, I still love tactile switches, but I definitely have to say these switches are my new favorite as opposed to their tactile. Now, I still like their tactile switches over their linear, older linear switches, though. These older linear switches just don't work for me. They're okay for gaming, but I need an everyday switch. I need something that I can go back and forth in different lifestyles with, and this works for me. So, enough about the switches. Let's move on again talking about the board itself. As I said before, this board is just like their other Vulcan line of boards. Same style, same look, unfortunate ABS keycaps, but everything else is still the perfect board. It's just, I love these small caps that they have on these. Yeah, I love the way the light comes through in all these. And something that's been great about these Vulcan boards and still on these is their stabilizers. They have, to me, some of the best stabilizers out there. Now, I recently owned Logitech's Low Profile G155915, I think is what it is, TKL board. It wobbled, it shook, it rattled, it was terrible. Stabilizers on terrible. Board was cool, board was slick, it was nice, but it was just too wonky. Now with these, now again, I've been using a Vulcan keyboard for a while and it's got the same stabilizers, but it's just, I'm gonna have reiterate, reiterate about it. These are great, nothing wrong. And you would think when you look at these with these you know, short keycaps, that'd be a problem, but they're not. And I think the reason why is if you were to pull one of these keycaps and look at it, they have a longer stabilizer in them think that's probably why it helps it if I was taking some other board and pull it off it's got a short stabilizer these have a really long stabilizer and I think that's what helps them I could be wrong and there's one thing I did notice though stabilizers on the space bar their TKL board is a little different um it looks different than these 
too many full size keyboards. I don't know why they did that. I don't there's some could be some reason for that because it was smaller, but I don't know. But because of that, I feel like there's a little bit better stability in the TK01, but it's very minimal. It's very but they work about the same. And so again, um what else if I can need to cover? Um you know, as you can see, this comes with a braided cable. You know, it's just keyboard. I, I'm, you know, all these fuss these days about it, cables. I, even if it was kind of rubbery, it wouldn't bother me any because it's just going to be plugged in. It's just going to be sitting there. I'm not going to be moving around a lot. Um, but it works great. Now, there is a little, like I said, a little difference on this board compared to the other earlier Vulcan line is that this board is black finish. The earlier line was a gray. The 121 had a gray, the 120 had like a silverish, and then the 122, which is a silver with their white caps, where this one here is just black. I like it. It's got a black look now. It's just, it just flows. It works for me. You know, I almost bought the 120 at one time instead of the 121, but I don't know. It... it I just didn't like the way it looked. It had that silver finish with the black keycap. And I know some people like that. You know, it's got a kind of a military look to feel into, you know, gray on black kind of thing. But it just didn't work for me. The 121, I was happier that it had a darker gray into that into black keys. But this here, that black on black, I think it's phenomenal. I think they did a really good job with that. I think they made a great choice in that too. Um, you know, who's to say that they won't offer it in different color, you know? different variations, you know, a little out of gray, white, whatever. If they do, great, but that'll appease to everybody. Me, personally, I like the black. I'm not a fan of white keyboards, but to each their own. You know, I don't know what else I can cover on this, except for, you know, it, 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 I mean, it's not much to more to say about it. I think it's a phenomenal board. So let me end with this then. There is one thing I like to discuss about it. The 199 price tag. So, this here is $199. Their older line is $159. That's a $40 difference. Now, as I was telling you, they're basically the exact same board. They're constructed exactly the same way. There's nothing new in this pro line of boards besides the key switches. As I said, I love them. I don't think they're $40 better, though. I, you know, I think the 159 price is, is pushing it on the, on the end of it for them, so, you know, on the older boards as well. I'm not saying it's high. It's not astronomical. There's definitely higher end. You know, of course, their new board is $230. I think that's ridiculous. Logitech's boards, they're, you know, their light speed wireless one, to me, I think they're overpriced. Um, I think this board at 199 is, I know it's competitive, but... While it's constructed phenomenon, it's my favorite board. I think if you go and look at features to other boards and stuff like that, I think the price is a little bit much, but that's just kind of a personal feeling. I still love the board. I think if you if you have the older Vulcan line, I personally would not pay to upgrade. I'd keep the older line unless you're having issues with it for some reason, whatever. I think I don't think the price justifies needing to upgrade. Now if they'd thrown some double shot keycaps on here, that would have done it for me. That would have been with these switches and that keycap, $200 would have been, I've been like, sold, perfect. I think that's a great price range then. But because it lacks that, you know, you're gonna wear these out. They're gonna wear out just like the older line. You're gonna have issues with them, you know, not issues with the actual switches, but the keycaps on them. I think that kind of diminishes that $200 price range for me, at least, you know. Um, you know, it, it's not a negative in the sense that it, it's not a, it's a deal breaker that I shouldn't, I won't recommend it because I do. If you're looking for a new keyboard and you just got to have Rocat's latest and greatest, I'm all for it. I think if you want a TKL version, I don't have one of their new TKL Pros in it, but I can tell you it's the same key switches and it looks like this. So I'm going to give you a quick little dirty on this one right here. This is their TKO non-pro, this is the Vulcan TKO, and you can get this board in linear or tactile, but if you get the pro version, you only get the optical linear switches. 
this board to me, for some reason, is a little bit better construct feeling to me than the full size board. I don't know what they did in here, but this built board feels sturdier than the full size board. It, I don't know why, I can't really figure it out. It just, it's even got a heavier feel in it, but it's not. I know it's a little bit lighter because it's smaller, but it just feels, it feels stronger. See this, this is hard. If I come here on the full size boards, it's hollow. Hear that? Again, you go to the TKL, it's a solid feel. It feels solid when I tap on it. This one doesn't. I don't know what they did with their TKL boards, but it's amazing. And by far beats this in construction. I don't know, I, I'm afraid that, not by far, but it, it, it does. It just feels better. And I, I, I don't know how they did that. Everything looks all the same the way, same plastic, same metal, but it's, it's not hollow. And so if you're a TKL person, get this one or get the Pro, you will not be disappointed. It is just the best built keyboard I've ever held. It's amazing. This one here still is. It's still a great keyboard, but it's just slightly feels different than those TKLs. Um, again, Bill, I need a keypad. If I didn't, this would be my board, bar none. But I do need a keypad because I don't want to sit there and switch out. I'm not gonna go grab a TKL when I want a game and then put it back and then grab my full size when I gotta work. So I just own the full size because I have everything I need then. But if I didn't need that keypad for regular day use whenever I'm home and working or whatever, this would be the board. So again, I'm gonna finish with this. Great board, phenomenal board. I recommend it to anybody and everybody that wants one. You know, decal, full size, whatever. Again, I'm not a fan of the price, but that's just me. But I definitely think Real Cat has outdone themselves with this board. And to me, that says it all. And that's the bottom line. Thank you.